All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of Westeros. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing George R. R. Martin, Fire and Blood. This is the prequel book to the massively, hugely successful Game of Thrones series by the same author. If you've followed my channel for any length of time, you know George R. R. Martin is one of my favorite writers of all time, probably in my top five. And his Game of Thrones fantasy series is probably in my top three fantasy series of all times. <clears throat> Got my original... Game of Thrones that I bought back in 1996. Even have it signed. You know I love showing off my signed book collection. There's the... Uh... Anyway, we'll put that back here. Next to our um, George R. R. Martin Funko Pop. Now let's get to it. Let's get busy on this review. Fire and Blood. A prequel novel. Gosh, I don't even know if I can call it a novel. It's more of like a history of Westeros. Um, kind of like the Silmarillion was the history of Middle-earth in J.R.R. Tolkien's world. Fire and Blood is the similar type of book to the Game of Thrones series in George R.R. Martin's world. So let's talk about the covers first. Because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration, so let's go over these covers. We've got the original first edition hardcover here, and we've got a little mass market paperback. So let's judge these covers one at a time. First of all, they're similar. I mean, they've got the same exact design. With the exception of the paperback has this goofy HBO advertisement at the top for their um, show, uh, House of the Dragon. That's the only drawback to the paperback. It's got a nice little wrap around, a little scroll on the back here. It's all right, except for the little advertisement. Now, the hardcover is much better because it doesn't have the advertisement. And on the back, it's got this dope illustration of a dragon. And there's no illustrations inside the paperback. However, inside this hardcover... There's a lot of illustrations, and they're really cool. Um, just great illustrations throughout. Um, there's a nice map, as we would expect. There's a glossary of characters and lineage in the back. And there's probably, I dare say, maybe a hundred or so different illustrations throughout the book. And they're just great. I mean, I can just turn to any page and we get... I mean, I just turned a couple pages and we get more. I mean, they're just all over the place. So this book is a really, really great thing to have in your George R. R. Martin collection. Let's review it. Did I like it? Did I not like it? Well, um, here's the thing. I liked it about as much as I like Tolkien's the Silmarillion in comparison to the Lord of the Rings. I like the Lord of the Rings a lot better because it is a fully fleshed out epic adventure with all the characters and dialogue and scenery and everything just laid out for you in a grand story. That's the way Game of Thrones is too. George R. R. Martin with his writing in the Game of Thrones, he is a, just a masterful writer. He just, uh, the world building is exquisite. It's detailed, it's grand, and it's epic in scope. His characters are second to none. You love them, you hate them, you, you're you riveted to every word they're saying to each other. And the descriptions he has of the, peop the places and the things and the creatures and all of that are just absolutely dynamite. Same with Tolkien in Lord of the Rings. Now, with the Silmarillion, as with Fire and Blood, you get a very stripped down version of all of that. Though the stories in here are massively epic in scope 
and that on the surface seem like they would be just really, really cool stories to read in detail. This book, as a whole, reads much like a history, a piece of nonfiction history. Just like you're going to read the history of the United States, or the history of Russia, or the history of whatever. It's kind of like that, like a, like the deep, uh, like a uh, kind of a detailed history of England from the time it, from, like Peter Aykroyd's series on the history of England. That's what it really reminds me of, because Peter Aykroyd just kind of gives you a gloss over event by event thing that happened in different certain generations of this history of England. That's what George R. R. Martin gives you in this book. Is that good or bad? It's for you to decide. If you're into, some people love this, some people hate this. I am kind of in the middle in that I really enjoyed it, most specifically when I started reading about the events that surround the epic House of the Dragon HBO show. I mean, that's where things got interesting to me, but I had to get to about page 360 in this book to get to those events, and then they were just sort of semi-glossed over for 100 pages, and then we move on with the history of what happens after that. So we don't get to spend a whole, what I'm saying is, you get the Cliff Notes version. It's like the Cliff Notes version of an epic fantasy book is what you're getting. That's what George R. R. Martin set out to write. It was advertised as such. It was produced and sold as such. And those of us that bought it and knew it was going to be that, just a history of Westeros. In fact, it's part one. There's going to be a part two. So when I'm reading these stories, and I'll be honest, some of them were riveting. Some of them I was just glossed over just because it was one one historical figure after the next just mentioned and nothing, no detail really given about them. And they did this, that, just a few sentences here and there. And so you weren't really invested in the characters per se. You're more invested in the grand epic scope of this history of this world that George R.R. R. Martin's created. That's the point of the book. That's what George R.R. R. Martin set out to do. This is strictly 100% world building on just a massive historical scale, much like the uh, Silmarillion was in comparison to the Lord of the Rings. If you've read those two, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I can't help you. It just, just, it's just, um, if you're a type of person that likes to read an epic fantasy novel with lots of action and adventure, you might not like this. If you're the type of person that lead, likes to read history books, you're going to love this because the structure of this book is exactly like that. Um, you're not going to get anything more. You're not going to get much character dialogue at all. Um, very little character description, just brief brushes, br brief brush strokes of who they are, what their personality might be. And then you get kind of like when they were this age, they did that. And then they were this age, they did that. And then, you know, 20, 30 pages later, they're dead. And then the, the next generation takes over. Here's the thing that I love about the book, though, is <laughs> the thing I love about the book is actually the HBO show House of Dragons, um, because House of Dragons took about 100 pages out of this and is making it into a massive, detailed adventure story, which I love. And if HBO were to go ahead and take other stories out of this massive tome of history and turn those also into big massive epic HBO miniseries, I would be on board 100% and I would watch them all because I really do love the original Game of Thrones series and I actually really do love House of Dragons. The tone of it, the acting in it, the cinematography of it, the set design of it. I just like everything about it. And they pulled it right from a part of this book. And it's great. And if HBO decided to do all the stories in this book as miniseries, I would watch every single one of them because HBO does a great job in production value. And these stories, I want to know more about them. This is just a history book. I want to know the details. I want to know the details. Imagine the entire Game of Thrones saga. The five books that we've got, plus the two that are yet to be written. Seven full books. Imagine 
all of that boiled down to about a hundred pages of text. It should just be an outline. Just be a vague outline of what happened. That's what's in here with all the stories in here. Anyway, so all the other Game of Thrones books I've given 10 out of 10 stars. They're just brilliant, epic, some of my favorite pieces of literature. This one is a good piece of literature for a whole different set of reasons because I love reading history books, nonfiction history books. This just happens to be a very well written history book about a made up place called Westeros. And you got to give George R.R. R. Martin credit for putting something like this together. I was, I was reading it. I'm like, I can't believe he spent time writing this. I mean, that's just bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. But he did, and kudos to him, because it was pretty fairly entertaining most of the way through, and I just wanted more. That's all I can say about it, as I want more. Not another book similar to this, but I want all the stories in this book to be fleshed out in all their glorious detail like HBO is doing with House of the Dragon. So I'm going to give this a solid 8 out of 10. Not quite my cup of tea as these were, because these were my cup of tea and then some. This is like half a cup of tea, and it's all right. And I give it 8 out of 10 because it just it made my imagination go wild, and I liked that part of it. Uh, you know, the whole thing, if, if any of that makes sense.